This webinar is hosted by the British Council and is on student visas. My name is Erica Serbon and I work for UKBA. The presentation is structured in response to the questions that you raised in the recent agent survey. We hope that you find the presentation useful. In this presentation, we are going to cover the following points. Tier 4 financial requirements. Tier 4, can a Tier 4 student work in the UK? The Tier 4 recent changes. Student visitor and extended student visitor route, the tier two general route, the graduate entrepreneur route, and at the end of the presentation, I'm going to give you some more helpful tips to perhaps make the visa process smoother. To begin with, let's talk about the student visitor and extended student visitor route. These are some of the questions that were raised. Can a student visitor extend in country? The answer to that question is no. A student visitor will either come to the UK for a period of six months, or indeed, if they're on an extended student visitor visa, for 11 months. There's no provision for them to extend their stay whilst in the United Kingdom. Can a student visitor work? Again, the answer to that question is no, because they are here for a limited period, and therefore their conditions attached to their stay does not allow them to work. One of the questions raised is regarding, regarding the English requirement, as there was some confusion. May I just clarify that if a student is coming to study English in the United Kingdom, the English language requirements are not the same as they are for Tier 4. Questions are raised regarding child students. As you are all aware, the child student normally comes to the UK um, to do their primary school education or their secondary school education. There are often instances, though, where they will attend summer camps or perhaps even come for a short English language course. There is a provision for them to do so, and not just as a Tier 4 student. All this information is on our website. There are also questions regarding the eligibility of extended student visitor visas. In order to be eligible for an extended student visit visa, the course would have to be longer than a six-month period and not, long, and not greater than the 11 month period. The extended student visitor route um, came out as a result of a request from English language schools to give them the ability to, do, to run sh longer English language courses. Let's talk about tier four financial requirements. When somebody comes to study in the United Kingdom, they need to demonstrate a certain amount of funds. The reason for this is not just because we want to make it difficult for a student to come to the UK, it's so that we can be assured that that student has the ability to accommodate and maintain themselves when they arrive and during the course of their studies. So firstly, for a student who does not have established presence, and when I, mean, when I state established presence, that means that they have not been a student in the UK previously and do not have extant stay on their visa. So for a student who's coming to the UK for the first time as a Tier 4 student, if they choose to study in inner London, they need to show £1,000 for each month of their course up to a maximum of nine months. So that equates to £9,000. If they choose to study in outer London, or anywhere else in the UK, they need to demonstrate £800 for each month of their course up to a maximum of nine months. For a student who does have established presence, and this could be in a situation where somebody has perhaps returned home after doing their degree and is coming back to do their postgraduate diploma. In this instance, they are viewed as having established presence. Therefore, if they choose to study in inner London, they will need to show £1,000 for each month of their course, up to a maximum of two months, therefore £2,000. Or if they choose to study in outer London or anywhere else in the UK, it's £800 for each month of their course, up to a maximum of two months. So that would be £1,600.
Some of the questions that were raised as part of the agent survey were the following. How do I work out the 28-day period? Now this can be rather confusing. A Tier 4 student must show that he or she has held the required money for a consecutive 28-day period, finishing on the date of the closing balance, and they no more than one month before his or her application. What happens if two or more pieces of evidence are submitted for a single account? Where two or more pieces of evidence from a single account are used, for example, two bank consecutive bank statements, we will assess the funds available to the Tier 4 general student from the closing balance of the most recent document. What happens when evidence is submitted from two or more accounts? Where evidence is from two or more accounts, we will assess the funds available to the Tier 4 general student as being the closing balance of one account plus any additional money available to the student on the date of that closing balance for which the student has provided the required evidence. We will all use the closing balance date from the account that most favours the Tier 4 student. Who can sponsor a Tier 4 student financially? A student can be sponsored by their government, or a student can be sponsored either by their parents or a legal guardian. What evidence is required to demonstrate the above relationship? Well, we would expect to see a birth certificate to indicate the relationship between the parent and child. Or, if it's a legal guardian that we're talking about, a legal document which clearly states that that is the case. Can a Tier 4 student work in the UK? There are quite a few questions of the agent survey regarding this, so I hope this clarification will help you. So firstly, who can work 20 hours a week and full-time during vacation, vacations? Well, where a Tier 4 general student is following the course at NQF Level 6, QCS Level 6, or SCQS Level 9, or above, with a sponsor business which is a recognised body or a UK higher education institution, or is undertaking a short-term study abroad degree programme at an overseas recognised body or higher education institution, the following work is allowed. They can work part-time for 20 hours a week. However, during vacations, they can work full-time. If a student, and the next question was, if a student, what student can, who can work 10 hours a week and full-time during vacations? Well, if you are a Tier 4 general student, who is following a course at NQF Level 3, 4 or 5, or QCF Level 3 or 4, or 5, or SCQF Level 6, 7 or 8, with a sponsor, which is a UK higher education institution, the following work is allowed. You can work part-time during term time for not more than 10 hours a week, and full-time during vacations. And who can't work? in the UK whilst on the Tier 4 visa. That's any Tier 4 general student who is following the course at any level with a Tier 4 sponsor, which is not a UK higher education institution, a short-term study abroad degree programme at an overseas higher education institution, or a publicly funded further education college. They are not allowed to work. Now let's look at the recent Tier 4 changes. First of all, we have introduced time limits in Tier 4. There is now a maximum combined time limit of five years for study at bachelor and master's level. There is already a time limit of three years for study below degree level. There are, however, exceptions. For students studying at PhDs at higher education institutions and certain subjects such as medicine and veterinary studies. The student route is a temporary one and should not be seen as a route in the settlement through long residence. The next change is on work placements. We are limiting the amount of time spent on work placements to one third of the total course time. For universities, the maximum amount of time allowed will remain 50% of the total course time. 
We're also looking to extend the interim limit. And this is all to do with the new qualifying criteria. These interim measures will replace, remain in place until the end of 2012, by which all providers will have been inspected. There are also changes in relation to personal funds, which um, I already spoke about earlier when we talked about financial requirements. There has been an increase. There's also been a change in terms of in the English language requirement. All students studying pre-sessional courses below degree level must have had a B1 CELT certificate. Higher education institutions can no longer self-assess students' English language ability with regards to B1 CELT level. And this applies to students issued with a single CAS covering the pre-sessional and the main degree course. I hope that's clear. As you all know, the Tier 1 post-study route is now closed. However, there are other routes um, in order for students to remain in the United Kingdom if they choose to work. The first one is the Tier 2 general route. Now, the Tier 2 general route does have a salary requirement um, of £20,000 in relation to the codes of practice. It all depends on what kind of position the student wishes to accrue. I would strongly suggest that you have a look at this particular route as it might be something that the students are interested in after they have finished their degree. There's also the Tier 1 Graduate Entrepreneur route, which is pretty exciting. This basically involves um, a scheme which is open to all higher education institutions which are highly trusted sponsors for the purpose of Tier 4 of the points-based system and are A-rated for the purpose of for Tier 4 if such a license is held. The university must have an established process for identifying, nurturing and developing entrepreneurs amongst their undergraduate and postgraduate population. They must be able to maintain contact with migrants and assess their progress at regular intervals and inform UKBA if migrants are no longer participating in the scheme. Applicants will need to be in the UK and sponsored by the university from which they have graduated. And UKBA has given universities the freedom to decide how to best identify the strongest candidates. So there will be competition, but at the moment there is a limit of up to 1,000 places for the first year. If this scheme proves successful, this may increase. Successful applicants will be granted leave for 12 months initially which may then be extended for a further 12 months, providing the sponsored university satisfied with the progress they have made. It is quite an exciting scheme and therefore worth looking into. Now this is time for some other tips. Firstly, the application form. When either yourself or the student is completing the online application form for entry clearance to the United Kingdom, they must ensure that they have all the relevant information that they require. If they need any further information from the institution, ask the student or yourself, ask the institution for that information. It's very important also that whatever is on the CAS reflects what's on the application form and vice versa. Some common reasons for refusals for both Tier 4 and student visitor applications is a lot of the time due to finances or lack of. In terms of Tier 4, it's really important to ensure that the bank statements or financial evidence submitted meets the requirements. With the student visitor route, it's also important that the student can prove that they can maintain and accommodate themselves. So whilst there isn't a strict, strict criteria in which to abide by, it is important that they can show that they have the funds necessary to look after themselves whilst they're in the United Kingdom and also show that there are ties to their country of origin so the entry clearance officer can ensure that they will return at the end of their stay. The timeliness of the application is also really, really important. If an application is submitted late, there might be an instant issues where indeed it cannot be issued, the visa cannot be issued in time for the course to start. Therefore, we strongly recommend that you apply for the visa as early as you possibly can. Now, where do you look for all this guidance? All the information that I've told you today comes from our Tier 4 policy guidance, which is available on our website. 
and here is our website. As well as the policy guidance, we also have some helpful tips for you in, to, in, in the form of bullet points, which can sometimes take you to some of the, you know, the, the new changes that take place, but also eligibility, you know, am I eligible to be a Tier 4 student? We strongly recommend that you ask or you tell the students about this, so they themselves can point themselves to see whether or not they would be eligible for a Tier 4 visa. We hope to have some more of these webinars, and I hope you found them useful. A survey will be then sent out after the webinar to determine what your thoughts were. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Please stand by.